following is presented by CrewRoundTable.com Podcast Network. Welcome to Crew Roundtable Bites. Food for your mind. Recorded live to tape. No edits. Real, raw, and reasonable. This is Crew Roundtable Bites. Friends to Crew Roundtable Bites. This is the summer fill-in show for the Crew Roundtable, which is on hiatus until we come back in September. Uh, We are going to keep the airwaves fresh with new content for you, and we encourage you to go to crewroundtable.com, get all of the past episodes, and of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, My name is Gino, and I am joined by... Uh, JR... Hello, Gino. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm glad that we were finally able to do this. I know that you had you had this idea germinate over the summer to say, let's have something for the summer when the entire crew, all five of us, take some time away. And I'm really looking forward to doing this. Uh, me too. Me too. Uh, a solo show. You know, we both have uh, individual show, solo shows, but uh, I, I find that uh, they can either get one-sided or uh, just subject to not being able to... Uh, get in front of a microphone so I like coming together at least puts into a schedule so it helps to um, get a plan in place so at least we can the two of us can sit down and uh, and have a, and a good discussion because uh, what I like about the main crew is we can we can rebut each other's points so we can now we've got, at least we've got the two of us to uh, you know, discuss these topics with Correct. And uh, speaking of discussing the topics, let's get right into our first topic. Yes. Which is, is using an incorrect pronoun a hate crime? This is based off of some legislation that was passed in Canada in June of 2017 uh, called Bill C-16. And what this bill does is it threatens, amongst other things, monetary fines, anti-bias training, which is similar to the re-education camps from the Simpsons when Ned Flanders took over the world, uh, also included jail time for repeated offenses. Those are, uh, th- that offense is if people do not use the gender pronoun that corresponds to a person's selected gender identity. What this legislation does is it puts gender identity and gender expression into the Human Rights Act. And it puts hate crime into the criminal code as it relates to gender pronouns. Of course, hate crime is already in there. Um, So the short answer to our topic, as we said, this is going to be a a much lighter discussion of some heavier topics. Um, When we're asking, is using an incorrect pronoun a hate crime? The answer is yes, because it's now part of the law. So, JR, that was a fantastic show. And we're going to be back next week. Okay, (laughs) it's legal, it's part of the law. Legal part. Conceptually, yes. do you feel it should be a hate crime? And and that's what we're going to be discussing because we're going to leave legal stuff to the legal beagles. We're coming at this from the point of real people in everyday in everyday life. Uh, we're going to be speaking probably quite a bit about a gentleman named Jordan Peterson. Um, so that'll be later on in the show. For this though, as it comes to our personal opinions, I'm going to let Jr. start. Um, I personally think uh, yes, it, it should be a hate crime. Uh, but I feel the severity I think is is, is rightly left at fines. Um, there's you know, uh, and I'll explain it this way: we're not talking about accidentally using an old pronoun. Let's say you knew someone who was a male and then trans transitioned to a fem- to to present as a female. If you accidentally use he the, the, ma- the male pronouns truly uh, incorrectly in, in the beginning that's not a hate crime they, but there are a lot of people who uh, specifically uh, try to reject someone's transition by continuously using their original pronouns even after being cor- specifically corrected by the person to uh by be for uh, for using the wrong one, they've corrected them saying no, I'm I'm am a female now or I'm a male now, and they and, and and the one person 
is specifically continuing to use the original ge gendered pronouns because they are essentially rejecting this person, what this person has decided for their life. Um, I don't think it. I, 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 I mean, if uh, I don't think it really applies if you if there's a if you meet a transgender person and you start using they, which is a neutral program. It's a plural program pronoun, but it's also a neutral plural program pronoun. So I don't think that applies because uh, you could make the you can make the uh, the call it well I didn't know or I was too shy to ask, so I defaulted to a neutral pronoun. And that's not a hate crime. But there's lots of times where, for example, with um, Caitlyn um, Jenner, 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 where a lot of people will specifically call her he because they are outright rejecting her life choice. So I don't, I, I don't really know anything about the Jenners. I don't follow that show. I don't follow those people uh, on, t on TV. Um, and by those people, I mean the Kardashian family. I mean, how I even know the name, I'm sad and disappointed in myself for knowing that but um when you mentioned at the beginning of your of your uh statement that you were uh or sorry that it was about what state the person who is transitioning is in so at what point would you say someone who is transitioning let's just use transitioning from male to female at what point does something like this legislation kick into place where the person who is transitioning, in your opinion, at what point can they say, call me she, Z, Zer, whatever these pronouns are, at what point can they say that and this would, and this legislation would apply? Once you, it, 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 it's not, it, it has nothing to do with at what point during the transition. Once they have informed you that these are my pronouns, that is when that is when it, it would take place. Okay, so it's not a question of biology for you. No, no. It's once you've been informed. It's just like, uh, as a male, you ask a woman out and they say no, that's not harassment. If you continue to ask that person out and keep bothering them, that, that is harassment. That, that, that's the way, I, that, that's basically what the... the what I was taught in in, in, in uh, harassment training at work, and not that I had to go through it specifically. This was a across the board training that everyone took. But good save. basically, good save. yeah, good save. So basically, <laughs> it's not a crime to ask someone out. But when someone tells you specifically they are no they are not interested in in, in going out with you, further pursuit of that woman of, the, of, of that person is harassment, and this is the same thing. You know, maybe you accidentally use the wrong pronoun because they, because they, you know, you don't know what they look, they don't know where they are, and ninety percent of transgender people will not jump down your throat the first time you make a mistake. They usually they'll probably cor politely correct you. If you continue to do to purposely use the wrong uh, pronoun, and um, then. That is where it becomes a hate crime, and 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 and, and again, it's it's very difficult to. Uh, it, it's hard to prove intent unless someone actually absolutely says, "No, you're not a wet man, you're a woman," or "You're not a woman, you're a man." I don't, you know, or, or you're perceiving, or, or they perceive specific start hitting the pronouns really hard, like, "Oh no, he." Is uh, is right here, like the, the, the inflection in the, voice. the, the they'll try, usually when someone is pr specifically using wrong pronouns to and trying to make a point out of it, they hit the pronoun harder. And you know, if you've been corrected, you you actually you absolutely have to stop using the word. You have to. I think it, it's it's. It, I think it would be synonymous with someone telling you what their name is. And therefore, and then you use that name going forward. You know what I'm saying? If I introduce myself as JR and you don't like me, so you're going to start calling me Sally. Well, that is actually insulting. And that's, I would take that as an attack because you're not respecting what I've told you my name is. I don't see why gender has to be any different. So, so this is where, uh, and I'm very glad you brought up that point because this is where someone like Jordan Peterson comes into the discussion yes um, because if you go and look up any of his YouTube videos and things like that um, 
he doesn't really care about trans about people who are transgender. He doesn't really have an opinion on whatever you feel like. His whole thing is him forcing you to call someone by a pronoun that he thinks does not reflect reality. Well, then, then, then he's then, then that's a cl- okay. but then he's he's rejecting your gender choice. No, no, hold on, hold on. But that I, because one thing that you said at the beginning, which would be fully agreed with uh, by I think I think Peterson would fully agree with this, and I think that anyone would agree with this is you introduce yourself as Jr. Yes, you're a he. People start calling you she. People start calling you Sally. And they do it repeatedly. And they do it with the intent of essentially mm. bullying you. Or mocking, yes. Of mocking exactly. you. Of belittling you. That is no different than bullying. And calling someone of the opposite sex something like that, something which does not reflect the reality of you are a male and they're calling you something else. There's already laws on the books for that. There's already ways to prosecute people for saying these things. That could be an assault. It could be a nuisance. It could be what it could be whatever the case may be. It could be that you're in a, a work environment and that's now creating a toxic work environment for you because you're JR, but no one calls you JR, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, and, and well, hold on, okay. hold on. I want to make the connection here. I find this to be very similar to the Harper government when they brought in legislation against honor killings. Yes. Now, for those who are not aware, honor killings, this legislation was specifically targeted towards people in the Muslim and the Indian community Yes. who carried out acts of violence against women, such as killing them, <laughs> right? Yes. And the number one criticism of this piece of legislation when it came out was that we already have laws against killing. You are doing this specifically to target that demographic. You are doing that to specifically target that group of people. You're not introducing honor killing legislation for the rednecks that live in Northern Ontario. You are doing it specifically to address a a group of people. Well, because murder is illegal anyway. It's illegal anyway. So whether exactly. it was done for honor or whatever reason, it's illegal. And I don't know why it has to be extra illegal because a Muslim did it. You're exactly. Right. But and I th- that's the same thing with these pronouns. That's where the that's where the discussion comes in, because these pronouns now forcing someone and like you said, it's you said it's not a question of you said it's not a question of biology, right? So yeah. someone at any point in the system can say, I now identify as X. And you better call me that. Whatever that is. Yes. It has nothing to do with gender pronouns. It could be anyone identifying as anything. You have to call someone what they want to be called, regardless of how that jives with reality. That's where the problem comes in, because the key is having it be compelled speech. And this Peterson guy, he is super strong against the government being able to tell you what to say. In his opinion, this flies against everything that's uh, flies against the entire history of rights and freedoms that come from the government, because the entire history of rights and freedoms is having the government leave you alone. The entire history of rights and freedoms is the government can't tell you what to say. The government can't tell you what to do. Now, of course, there's limits. Right? Well, when, okay, I just want to backpedal before we go over the limits. You, you keep talking about um, it, whether it does or does not reflect reality, but the reality is the reality of a person's gender is what they decided is what they decide it is. Not and, and once you've been informed of what the, what they what they are, that's the reality. You don't get to then decide what the, what someone else actually is. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's not. He's not questioning. He's he's not questioning the biology, but it, and on this point, but I have he is to say, because he's not using the person's the person's proper the chosen pronouns. If some, but that's the whole point. 
you don't get to decide what you are. That's his. That's his. That's his entire point. And even so he's if you, denying transgenderism. Is, exa- is what he's is what he's doing. Number one, if you have a male who has decided to be a female, right? Number one, he would say, "Well, that person has decided to be a female. That's their. That is how they feel." But that's not the truth. That person is a male. The biology says that they are a male. You can't have it both ways where everyone is equal, everyone is respected, everyone is the same, but then, no, I choose to be different. But these but these are not... First of all, it's not really a choice. The, the person was not, you know, chasing women one day and then just... The, the decision really isn't arbitrary. And this is what, what people who don't, who ha, who don't have this issue don't understand it, 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 it's 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 looking in the mirror and what you see is not aligning with how you feel on the inside this isn't an arbitrary decision that they just feel like oh i, I you know i want to wear a dress today and tomorrow maybe i'm going to be a guy again it's, it's it's you know theoretically someone should be able to decide that, 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 that that's that's in one that, that's one way but the reality is someone who is transgendered does not internally align with the, with what they have on the outside all right maybe they have a penis maybe they have a vagina but they don't feel the way the way they feel inside is they, they identify more as a woman than a man or they identify more as a man than a woman and when they put on a woman's clothes they feel better it, it's it's not a matter of feeling turned on it's it's just feeling at ease that the way you look on the outside is how you feel on the inside and it's almost and it's it, we say choose but it's not a choice this is, this is just this is the conflict that they feel on a day-to-day basis and by presenting as how they feel brings them you know relieves a mental anguish okay so when it comes to how you feel, so this was not supposed to be a topic about transgenders specifically, but when it comes to how you feel, there are many instances of people who feel one way and that's not correct. There are many instances of people who, again, if we come down to biology doesn't matter, there are people out there who feel that they want to be a paraplegic. There are people out there who live their lives in wheelchairs, except when they need to get up and walk around. And they will wear braces on their legs, and they feel like they should be living without functioning legs, which they have. There are people out there who may feel, if biology is not an issue, there are people out there who may feel like they are of another race. Because they feel that way is not a justification for compelling someone else to propagate that feeling. And you can't have it both ways. Now, again, this is, I, I don't want to go down the whole transgender issue because I've, I, I, I have known one person who has gone through this. Um, as, as, as I've, I've, and, I've known two people. And again, I've known one person who's gone through this and I wasn't really fantastic friends with them at the start, but it turned into someone went through this at a previous place where I worked, and uh, they had counselors come in and speak with, which I thought it was pretty forward thinking of the company. The owner had counselors come in and speak with individual uh, members of that person's team at work who they worked with Mm -hmm. and with groups of other people who may interact with this person throughout the day, throughout the course of their duties and had them and had these counselors come in and pretty much describe to us kind of the process, what's going on, the different, the different, I, I mean, levels might be the best term to use because some people don't go through the whole process. Some people just, like you said at the beginning, they change their dress. They might change their outward appearance um, they may take hormones, they may not, 
mm-hmm. they may start acting in a certain way. There's there's usually a name change that comes along with it, and now this person is now something else. That happened at work. In, in this case, the you work, too it happened where you had something. You had something. Yes, at we work. had exactly the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, as it turned out, work was the last was the only place where they were, where they were dressing and behaving as their uh, birth gender. So in this case, it was man who had transitioned to woman, and work was the only place that she was presenting as a man. Did, so did they go through the whole hormone thing? Did they go through? I believe they did. So they just kept dressing as a man at work. Yes. Yes. Okay. So and did. then uh, I believe what happened is when she went to get the gender reassignment surgery, she was off for about six or seven months, and we were collected into a room. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the person formerly known as this will now be known as this going forward. It was a little background, but they were very strict that there, will, there is zero tolerance on harassment. And you are not permitted to request not to work with this person. You are essentially basically to treat her as a woman and treat her as a human being. And you are not permitted to discriminate against her or harass her or even request to not to, to not be able to work with you. You have to be able to work with this person on a professional basis. And I and I love that we're talking about this because uh, one of the other topics that we're going to be addressing in a future show is the uh, fired Google employee who put his screed online um, talking about biological differences between men and women. So I'm happy that this is coming up here. Um, that's just a little teaser for you. Uh, once you head on over to crewroundtable.com and subscribe, make sure you don't miss that. Um, but you were saying, so you went through this at work. So did they have, did they do, did they do the same, th- blah, blah, blah. Did your work do the same process that mine did where they had people come in and talk? Uh, or did you get any sort of, uh, I mean, counseling is a strong word, but did you get any sort of, um, Direction uh, going forward. The, 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 education, I, sorry, education. I don't. I can't. I, I can't remember now. It's been ten years since 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 the person transitioned. Uh, I know. I know the. They weren't. They, they were. It was a little bit militant, as I recall. But they did offer that if you have any issues and you wanted to talk to somebody, that human resources was available for to for discussion in private. Uh, but they were pretty. Um, they were pretty hardcore. That uh, you know, harassment was not was not uh, permitted, and you could not opt to not work with this person. You cannot ostracize them professionally. You didn't have to be friends with them outside of work, but if uh, if you needed to interact with this person, because this person happened to be in charge of uh, calibration for the entire lab, so at one point, pretty much everybody was going to have to interact with this person. And you could not shun the person or choose not to interact with them. And at this point, I want you to give your explanation of what free speech actually is, because that I think is going to be our exit uh, exit item. So tell me what, give us your think, definition, think, because you, I've seen you give this to so many people yeah. because they just don't understand it. So please take us through what free speech actually free, is. Free speech in essence, in, in, in essence, is not being allowed to say whatever the hell you want. It, by the, by law, you can criticize the government. You know, if, in our case, our prime minister is Justin Trudeau. If you want to say that he is doing a really bad job, I don't agree with what he's doing, and I think he's. I think we need to vote him out. He cannot arrest you for saying that. Well, you can say a lot stronger things than that. I I I know. I'm not. Well, I'm I'm I kind of I'm a. I don't mean against. Guy. I don't mean against Trudeau. Yeah, I mean you, you can you, say you, some you, incredible you could, things. You, yeah, you could say some incredible things. You could say you want to overthrow the government as long as you're not making plans on specific violence. Uh, when you're saying you know, you, if you want to organize another party and try to have him and try to replace him, he or whatever, the government cannot arrest you for. What's going on? For um, uh, for, for speaking out and criticizing the government, and just to simply saying uh, I don't like what he's doing. I think he's doing a poor job. You are entitled to say that. Uh, it doesn't automatically mean that everyone has to provide you a platform to say it. Okay, uh, if you want to, um, if you want to criticize a, a particular race of people. 
that's not doesn't guarantee you that you can rent the hall in a hotel to have your rally. You j just because you are allowed to say something doesn't mean you are entitled to get a platform to do it. Uh, and that that's that's the difference. The government can't arrest you for saying it, but the rest of the world does not have to help you spread the message. It's essentially the the long the long and the short of uh, the limitations of free speech. Right. There are limits to everything. Um, the the government has uh, the ultimate limiter uh, because there is something called a limit clause in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and what that basically boils down to is. If the government can show that there's a good reason to put a limit upon you because it upholds some objective or some goal and it impairs you minimally in your freedom, they that is considered a justifiable limit. And the example that I always use to explain to people, um, you hear the example quite a bit of, you know, you're not allowed to yell fire in a crowded theater, right? Because that causes uh, more harm than your freedom to yell out whatever you want. Um, but some people don't like that example, so the example I use is um, forcing people to wear helmets on motorcycles, mm -hmm. uh, forcing people to wear seatbelts in their cars. Yes, that is a limit on your freedom, and it is a burden on you, but it achieves a much larger objective, which is for the greater good. Now, in, the, in, the, in your example, it's because uh, it's a little more justified because we have socialized health care. The government enacts those laws in order to lower healthcare costs. Well, you know, by preventing you from injuring yourself, it, they, it costs less money. Right, and there's and there's a whole bunch of good justifications, which is why we've got those limits. Yes. There are good limits, and everyone everyone agrees to those. You know, except for a couple of uh, head cases that went against them when they were first instituted in the '70s or whenever it was. But those people are probably no longer around anymore, and those are good limits to have. But those are the limits upon you imposed by the government. This, which again comes back to the main objection, is that this compels speech out of people. And it compels them where now it's not the government upholding someone else's rights. It's not the government uh, putting rights and freedoms into place that are available to everyone. This seems to be something that is a particularly targeted piece of legislation to introduce gender theory into the law. Um, and the big thing is that it now compels people to say something that they believe to be factually incorrect. This is not about, as you were mentioning before, um, saying things against the prime minister, right? Things yeah. that in, in a totalitarian state you would never be able to get away with. Mm -hmm. In North Korea, no one can say the things about uh, Kim Jong, and I forget if it's ill or own or whatever, whoever it is now, but no one could say things against a totalitarian dictator that we can say here in Canada against our prime minister. We are incredibly lucky to live in Canada um, where, where we do have this freedom. Um, this, again, it, again, it comes down to being able to force someone and having the power of the state be able to force you to say something that you don't want to say. And that's where that's where it starts to veer off and it starts to But then, but then then you're you're kind of counter arguing all hate all hate speech altogether. How do you get that? Um because when uh, you're not you know, when you're not allowed to say certain hate speeches, that's the same thing. No. It it it, it is the same thing because that that speech is Oh. Is, is is when hate speech is intended to? Um, no, no, it's no, no, it's it, it's it's not the same thing. And I thought we could get through the show without mentioning the word Nazi because I fucking well, we didn't need it. to have the same Nazi. Yeah, hate uh, it. No, no, but it's but, but you know, no, but this is this is I think the best example. All right, you're you're familiar with Ernst Ernst Zundel. Yes. Okay. So for those who don't know, Ernst Zundel, he is a famous Holocaust denier. He was extradited from Canada, sent to Germany. I think he spent five years or so in jail in Germany mm -hmm. for denying the Holocaust. Okay? So the difference is, under this Bill C-16, the government can 
force using fines, re-education, jail time, someone who refuses to acknowledge that, given our example, a man transitioning to a woman, regardless of biology, now should be called whatever they want to be called. The 30 pronouns, whatever they are. Okay. Well, hold that, on, that, hold that, on. You asked, you asked. That's not there. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, but okay. you asked, you asked. Okay. When it comes to the hate crime, we're not justifying every piece of hate crime because Zundel, the reason why he was prosecuted for that is because there is a fact of the matter, right? He was saying something that denied the fact of the matter, and he was the one who was actively saying it. If you want to make a true analogy between this and hate crimes, this would be the government telling you that you have to believe that the Holocaust happened. This would be the government telling you that you have to acknowledge that the Holocaust took place and that these people died or whatever, and that you have to publicly support that and declare your allegiance to that idea. But that's not how rights and freedoms work. Rights and freedoms are freedom from the government. So you can still think whatever you want. You can still say whatever you want. But you have to be careful how you say it. You're free to not agree with the idea of the Holocaust. But if you say it, that's a different story. These pronouns, this legislation... It forces like exactly you, the same no, thing. because this legislation forces you to say something that you don't want to say. It's not about you. But if you're denying quiet. the Holocaust, it's forcing you to say something you don't want to say either. There's a big difference. Ernest Zumbel is no, being no, no, no. forced to not deny the Holocaust. Now, for the record, I'm not denying the Holocaust. I'm trying, just trying to. None do, of us are. None of us. Now, are. you can't use. Ernest Zumbel is a very extreme example, but you, that, you know. A law can not only apply in an extreme example. No, no, but how, how are you, apply no, but, all universally? No, but how? But how are you not seeing? How are you not seeing the difference? Zundel is not being forced to accept that the Holocaust happened. But he, he's not being forced to say, "I believe that the Holocaust happened." He's not being forced to now say, "I retract what I said before. I was in error. I believe that the Holocaust happened. I believe that." Uh, you know, he he is saying something and he is being persecuted for it. This is different than this law which says, if you don't say this, you will be persecuted. That's a huge difference. And we've talked, we've talked a great deal on the Crew Roundtable, on the full podcast. You can go back and listen to the discussions we had about Rogers Cable, negative billing, putting the onus on people, reverse onus. I know Big V always likes to throw that out there. I don't know if he quite knows what it means, but um, that is something that we've discussed quite a bit. So that is where, that that is where, I mean, it's part of law. It's it's in there now. I'm sure some legal beagle will probably at some point challenge it under that limits clause, saying that it's either not a constitutional, uh, or or it's either that it goes against the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and then we'll have this discussion all over again. But for right now, I mean, as I said, I didn't want it to come down into transgenderism and discussing who and what and the bits and pieces and the biology, but that is where the main objection lies from people like Jordan Peterson, who, you know, he's not an idiot, right? He, if, if you go, he makes a much better case than I do. Listening to me paraphrase him is like, you know, looking at a masterpiece through muddy water, right? If you, if you want to go and find him, you can. Um, I'm sure there's lots of resources online where you can find out a lot about even the transgender process itself and what people go through because I'm sure there are some people who, for them, it is a real part of their life. It's something that they're struggling with and they want recognition for it. Um, I, the, the, well, I mean, okay, before I give my summation, JR, okay, please so go ahead. You've just said that and that was very eloquent. If it's a real, very real part of their life, then that's, a, that's their reality. And to deny that reality is the same as denying the reality that the Holocaust happened. You know, to, oh, yes, it's the same thing. By say, by, if someone tells you I'm a she and you, I'm a female and you use fem- and you use male pronouns, 
you are actively rejecting who they are. But you're missing the point. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the state compelling you to recognize it. Then The then, state then, cannot come to you and say, JR, we need you to go to the Pride Parade this year. The state can't tell you that you have to acknowledge the Pride Parade. No, you can't. You don't have to be mandated. The state but, cannot compel you to say things. The state cannot compel you to do things. Now, in some very small instances, they can. If you were to go get a job working for the federal government or something like that, you will be compelled to swear an oath of allegiance to the queen, whether you like the queen or not. And I know because I went through that once. I had to take an allegiance to the queen. I no longer work for the federal government, but I had to do that. I was compelled to do that because if I didn't, there was no job there for me. Right, but I don't like the I I don't like the whole monarchy. So then, then going back to our opening example, where if I tell you my name is Benny a Jr. Yes, right, and you decide that you don't want to use that name, and I'm gonna what 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 did you say, Sarah or uh, Sally? Let's Sally. say you're, let's say you're now we're not we're not implying that being a woman is. Uh, an insult, but some people use the wrong gender towards a person as uh, 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 as an insult. But we're not. We're not. We're not. We're just. Yeah. We're, we're just saying that. Right. We're not including that. It's 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 an insult to be a woman. So right. just to clarify. But you know, you you've seen many hypermasculine scenarios where they try to marginalize someone by using a female name instead. They Benny, call them Nancy, sex. Mary, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And that's harassment. We agreed, and we said there are already laws on the books stating that that's a form of bullying, that's a nuisance, toxic work environment. Everything is already there where that person can seek justice and compensation through the existing laws. Okay, so maybe we didn't need an additional law, but that still means that you know purposely calling someone but something. That's that they, they, the they, whole they, point. That's the whole point. The additional law. This law is analogous to those to the honor killing law. Which uh, no, I, not exactly. Not because exactly it targets, because it targets being a trans, no, group because of being transgender is is relatively new legal wise. Transgender people have always been around, and and but the recognition in the law has not been, you know. And I think where, for example, in the U.S., uh, homosexuality was deemed covered by civil liberties even though they weren't specifically called out. Now in the US that decision was made by a court and this law is basically verbally extending these protections uh, directly to transgender people. Instead of it being an implied inclusion, this is a direct inclusion. It's not the same as before where it was always illegal to murder somebody. Regardless of what it, it was, that 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 illegality was covered uh, explicitly without reference to religion and beliefs, whereas some of these hate crimes were not specifically, they, they, you know, they they were not specifically applied to gender and, and pronouns. And uh, I'm sorry if if you are specifically not. You know, you, whether or not there was a new law, like, it's still a, it's still a hate crime. It's still you're, you're still now. It's not a. I wouldn't say it's a jailable hate crime because uh, you're not attacking someone. You're not but you are harassing them by not using the the gender just like the name they've decided to choose for themselves. It's a harassment. Full agreement. You're Jr. You want to be Jr. Someone calls you Sally. Toxic work environment. Harassment. Now, if tomorrow I want to be Sally, and someone decides, that, well, no, I'm not going to call you Sally because I don't want to call you Sally. You like that now, so I'm going to call you something else, right? Or no, sorry, you were you were you were making a different. You know, it's, 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 it's one day I decided to be an actual Sally, right? And someone decided to deny that, right? Well, that's harassment, especially after I've corrected them, maybe once or twice. Like, listen, no. Uh, my name. Maybe I've legally changed my name, you know, to another name. 
that's my new name and I would like you to and I would like you to start using that otherwise I will I will imply that you are doing it to insult me now it's one thing if if you're accidentally still using it for a short period of time oh sorry I meant this and you're and you're being genuine about it or if you're being other other than being sarcastic about it which some people are like oh yeah now you're this you know you one, one can one, one can genuinely be incorrect and and then you can and I, would, I would imagine over time it would stop using the old name or the old pronouns and if it's a genuine mistake I think we can forgive that but at the same time I think we're pretty aware when someone's doing it as a mistake and when someone's doing it intentionally to insult you and I think that's where it becomes a crime. It becomes harassment. So, JR, you will get the last word on this. Um, we do need to wrap this up because we said at the beginning this was going to be a shorter take yeah, <laughs> from Bites. Um, and we, of course, got wrapped up in the uh, fervor of it all. Um, but uh, I would like to uh, say my final piece on it. And Go then for it. I'll, give you the, I'll give you the last word. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it seems like, once again, with many of our conversations, we agree on a lot of things. And we come to a different conclusion somehow. Not sure how that works out all the time, but um, the the uh, main point, you know, as we said at the beginning, um, is the you know the short answer is yes. It's now part of law. Should it be? That's where we get into this. Uh, that's where we get into this discussion. The um, uh, item that I want to leave off with is uh, I do agree with you that. Uh, there should be a shield in place for transgender people. Um, there should be something to stop that discrimination, stop that harassment that may take place because it, really this affects an incredibly small number of people in society. Um, but the, that small number of people does need to be protected. As, as I've said many times on the main show, it's, you know, a society is judged by how it treats the people who are in need, not the people who don't need. Um, there should be something in place. And I think that the laws that we have already on the books do a fairly good job of protecting people from harassment and discrimination. This is problematic on two fronts where it could be used not only as a shield, but it could be used as a sword because as we said, this is the government being able to compel people to speak. This is compelled speech, which is now part of law from the government. Um, which is writ a little bit larger than the examples I gave before of swearing an allegiance to the Queen. Um, this is legislation that could be used as a weapon. Uh, and the grand joke I find in all of this is we've already got neutral pronouns in English. We've got you, we've got they. Um, these 30 new odd ones that have come in uh, that you will be compelled to use, to me, they just seem like window dressing. Um, because... If someone is transitioning, if they wish to be recognized as something else, as a decent human being, you should take their feelings into account. You may not agree with them. You may have a discussion with them. You may be educated by them. But this shuts down all discussion completely because according to this, this is an indication that the final word has been written. The, the people, or as people who agree with Jordan Peterson will look and say, this is dubious gender theory. It's now part of law. And they feel that being compelled by the government, once again, goes against the entire history of rights and freedoms where we should be free from the government. Um, so that's that's my final thoughts on it. JR, take it away, and then I'll take us out. Okay, just, I, I, I disagree that the... the I, don't, I think the current laws, they were anti-harassment laws, but... Sometimes, you know, th th there are certain statements in the laws just like, you know, uh, in, the mo in, in previous discrimination laws, they covered, you know, all the old laws covered, you know, age, sex, um, uh, status, and they never caught, they, ne they never, um, they never covered sexuality. And there, and at that point, you know, uh, s it became up to interpretation. Some, some judges implied that anti-discrimination applied to everyone regardless of whatever and other another more conservative judges said well no I'm sorry homosexuality is not on this list they don't get covered and that's how it's been happening in the US 
uh, that's the way Mike Pence seems to be implying that, oh, they're not actually on this list. They don't get rights and rights and rights and freedoms. And I think that's what this law was intended to do, specifically call and specifically adding transgendered people to the list of hate uh, of, of hate crimes and therefore eliminating interpretation. I think that's what the intention. Whereas, uh, with your honor killing, murder is not up to interpretation. It's just that murder is illegal. End of story. You're right. Uh, I think how the hate. I don't. Know, I don't know the the hate laws verbatim, but I have a funny feeling there may have been loopholes that did not recognize transgender identity as a uh, target for hara- for hate. And I think this just closed a loophole. It wasn't implied, intended to put additional uh, onus. It was to, it was it was basically to add clarification and to extend it to uh, a once unrecognized and unmarginalized group in the eyes of the law. So I think I, I don't think they're just being draconian. I think they're just trying to add and make it implicit that they are covered, not explicit. It's not ep- explicit that they are included as hate speech, not implicit. Where it becomes interpretation of the judge, and, the, and I think that was the point of this of, of this law. So, uh, and you know, this doesn't shield the, 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 this professor from being fired for not uh, for disrespecting his students. I mean, it'd be any, it would be equally if he decided to give his, one of his students a derogatory nickname. Hey, fat pants, you know, and they started calling one student fat pants. Because they wore oversized clothing, because they happen to be overweight, that is just as that's harassment. Whether or not it's hate speech, it's still harassment, and it's unacceptable by by a professor. Just as you know, I'm gonna I'm, I'm not going to recognize what you've asked me to call you. Now the thirty the thirty pronouns, we can leave that for another 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 thing. But I think that's simply a sta- a symptom of this unacceptance of of. Uh, Transgender, and then be, and because there's no acceptance of it, there has been no standardized speech to deal with it. I think once there's an acceptance, we will settle, and that, it's, that's basically just a neutral program. No one's no one's coming up with alternate pronouns for male and female. It's a, I think people don't want to use plural pronouns for a single person, but there's no single neutral pronouns in English language, and that's where these thirty, quote unquote, thirty words comes from but that's just because nobody is acknowledging that they should exist so everyone's kind of going out and and, and, and wild westing it but once there's an acceptance I think we'll we'll, we'll settle on one 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 uh, non plural neutral pronoun and I think that, that and then the English language will evolve to cover it because the English language evolves all the time it's the most malleable of all languages ladies Gentlemen, other, <laughs> that is the first episode of Roundtable Bites. We encourage you, please, go to the website, crewroundtable.com. There you can find all the links to all of our social media. I encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at Crew Roundtable. That is an account that is manned primarily by the one and only JR, and he is a hoot to follow on that account. So, again, visit us on the web, crewroundtable.com, and we will be back shortly with episode two of Crew Roundtable Bites.